Today we're looking at possibly the best charger for first time FPV pilots. Let's take a look. I've been looking for a charger for a while and I've been looking for a balance, something that's portable, something that's quick, fast, efficient, and something that's not gonna light my house on fire. So yes, today we're talking about this one. Let's open this up. I got my unboxing knife right here. Boom. Put that away. What we're looking at here is the ISDT 608 AC. This is a nice portable charger that can do the trick for most pilots. Not just beginners, most pilots. On the outside here, looks pretty straightforward. It has a picture of the charger. It says AC 50 watts and DC 200 watts. And we'll talk about that a little bit later and what that means. I got this from Amazon, obviously, and I will leave a link where you can find this for a really good price. So let's open this up. No unboxing knife required. And boom, there it is right there. Looks very clean. Okay, so the first thing I see here is the charger. I'm gonna move some of these packaging around. This is a little container with, looks like a power cord. Here you go, pretty standard power cord. Looks like a power cord for a laptop, actually. You just plug this bad boy in. And then you have the charger itself right here. And then it looks like you just have some user manuals, some stickers, which is always fun. All right, so this thing is pretty cool. This is the charger right here. Take a look at that. Pretty cool. And as like I said, this thing is not too big. It looks like maybe six inches by eight inches, nothing crazy at all. Let's talk about why I went with this one and five reasons or five things you should look for when getting your first charger. Obviously these things can vary in prices. You have guys with really big chargers and you see some smaller ones, really small, tiny chargers and they all can do the job, but they have little variances in them. All right, so let's talk about the first thing. The first thing is whether it's powered via AC or DC, and there's benefits to both. Now, if you have a DC powered, which is the most common of the chargers, then you need a power supply. I didn't know that. When I was looking for chargers, I saw the prices. Oh, that looks reasonable. It's very small, but you need a power supply, meaning you need a, a DC volt or DC current going to the charger, and that can therefore regulate or charge based on the batteries that you wanna charge for your FPV drone or quad or plane or helicopter, or whatever you're charging. The DC chargers are usually more powerful. They have a higher output, and we're between 60 watts and let's say 1,000 watts, and that can vary later. We'll talk about these numbers in another video, but for now, just remember, the higher the wattage, the more capable your charger is. Now the benefits of having a DC powered charger is that you can be in the field, you can be away from home, and you can power the charger via a battery source or another power supply. In this case, if you have your car, you can use the battery in your car, or you can bring along a bigger or a really large LiPo battery, plug it into the charger, and that can charge your additional batteries. So the portability of a DC charger is where it's at. That's really good. So you also have an AC charger. Now the AC charger makes sense. It plugs into the wall, alternating current. And that one has benefits as well. Now, the thing about an AC charger is that they usually have a power supply in it. So now you just plug this charger straight into the wall. It converts the power from AC, which is alternating current, to DC, which is direct current. Now that also has benefits and negatives as well. In this case, you need to have an AC plug with you at all times, which you can't find readily available in the field if you're outside in the field flying. But in a certain cases, AC power does give you some advantages to just simply plugging it into the wall. The cool thing about this one right here is that it's both AC and DC. So this can do both. That's the reason why it comes with the plug right here. So I can just plug this into the charger and then plug this into the wall, which is really good if I'm charging batteries at home. Now. If I'm in the field now, how am I gonna charge this? I don't have an outlet into the, in the forest. Where do I plug this thing? Well, that's where this comes in right here. It's an AC slash DC charger. Let's see if I can get this separated. This thing actually pulls apart. I just did it right here. It just pulls apart. And now you have two separate pieces. This right here is your power supply. And this right here is the charger. So this same plug right here I just separated is an XT60 plug. 
you can take a battery or use your car battery plug into this and this turns into a DC charger. Because this is the AC slash DC charger, there are two different specs depending on what you're using to charge. In the AC mode I said before, it provides an output of 50 watts. If you are gonna use this in the DC mode, then you have 200 watts. And that's one of the great advantages of having a DC, as I said before, a DC charger is usually a higher output. So if I do use this in the DC output, I do have 200 watts of power and I can charge my accessories a lot faster. All right, so that's the first thing to look for in a charger and this does have both AC and DC. So this, remember that when you're choosing your charger. All right, the second thing to look for is your power output and your channels available. So in this case, I mentioned before, this is an AC slash DC charger. So with that said, it has specs for AC and DC. As I said before, 50 watts if you're charging via AC and 200 watts if you're charging DC. So that's the power output. And as I said before, the higher the number, the more capable your charger will be. Meaning you can charge more batteries, larger batteries or charge your batteries in a faster manner. What you also want to consider with the output is your channels. Now, sometimes you will see a one channel or a two channel charger. This one is a one channel, meaning I can charge only one battery at a time. Uh, there's an, this looks like a, this is an XT60 uh, port. Uh, this does charge one battery at a time. Now you can circumvent that situation by having a parallel board where you can charge multiple batteries at once. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But just remember, if you do have two channels, you can charge two separate batteries at the same time. You can charge two similar batteries, or you can charge two different batteries. These chargers do have the capability when they are multiple channels to charge them in different ways, whether it's faster or slower, or high amps or low amp. Okay, the third thing to look for when buying a charger is portability. In this case, this thing is very, very compact. I chose this charger specifically because of the form factor and its capabilities and the fact that it can charge AC and DC. Now, if I'm home, it doesn't really matter the size. I can have this anywhere. Uh, but most DC chargers will require a power supply as I stated earlier. And the power supply can vary in sizes. Now you can have a charger that looks like this very small and have a power supply that's twice the size. That takes up a lot of space. But your home, you're in your office, you're in your she shed or your man cave. It doesn't really matter how big the power supply is. As long as it's capable, that's all that matters. For me personally, I want something that's very compact, clean, sleek looking, and is very portable. Here's the form factor now if I have to take this on the road. It's really small. It's the size of an old cell phone probably. Um, not that very big at all, or a cassette player, if you remember a cassette player, but yeah. So this thing is really small. The form factor is pretty cool. So the size is, was really important. All right, the fourth thing you wanna consider when buying a charger, and this one does have it, is the interface. Um, interface slash smart charging capabilities. How you interface with your charger matters a lot. Now you have different kinds of chargers. You have some that are just analog with no screens on there. You push some buttons and it charges the battery. Uh, this one has a screen on here, color screen. You can see different parameters on here. Furthermore, this one is a smart charger. And what that means is that it has computers and chips in here to manage the battery during the charging process. So some of the older chargers, some of the cheaper chargers on the market uh, doesn't regulate uh, the battery as it charges. Sometimes it leads to overcharging, undercharging. Maybe some cells have more power than other cells. With a smart charger, all those things are taken care of. All the cells are being charged at the same current same rate they're balanced you can also discharge your battery you can store your batteries put it into a storage state where it will last for a long period of time so that's really really invaluable that that's one, one of the most important things to look for when buying a charger because these smart features do reduce the risk of charging these lipo high energy high voltage batteries okay the fifth and final thing you want to consider when choosing a charger and you guessed it is the price. Price, the price, the price. The price is very important, especially if you're a new FPV pilot. And I said it only because if you're new into the game, you really don't know if you wanna spend all this money into a hobby that you might just give up in the near future. So price point is really important. For me, this is really good price. Uh, this thing can vary between 50 and close to 70 bucks. Now that may seem expensive, but I actually consider getting a DC charger. 
Uh, I know I was gonna get some four cell batteries, some four S batteries, and I had to get a new charger. And I said, okay, I'll get me a cheap DC, still smart charger, but it's a DC charger. And it was around 35 to 40 bucks, and that's cheaper than what these go for. But once you add the price of a power supply, then you're looking at another 20 to 30 bucks. That's equivalent to 60, $65. And for not a compact, sleek package, I figured, well, what's the point? Let's just get me a nice, sleek, smart charger. And here we are, this thing is adequately priced. Now, most chargers of this capability runs between 60 to 100 bucks, sometimes over 150 bucks. And that's a pretty good price for a decent smart charger. The fact that this one is around 65 bucks average is a really, really good price. Very attractive to me as a first time pal. And as I said, you can grow with this. This charger in particular is so popular that it's really hard to find it on the market right now. Every site that I go to is usually sold out, sold out, sold out. I'll leave links down below where you can find it. So as I said, it ranges between 65 and 70 dollars, 70 bucks or so. So it's a really good charger. As I said, there's other chargers on the market that is just as capable having these features, AC, DC, high output, portability, but it doesn't have the whole package. So guys, if you're a first time pilot trying to get a charger for your drones, I would highly recommend this 608 AC charger by ISDT. Pretty cool guys, stickers and everything. Um, yeah, take a look at it. There's a lot of reviews on there. I'll be making a whole bunch of videos on this charger. This was just the unboxing and the five reasons why you wanna choose this. And just five things you wanna look for when choosing the first charger. So yeah guys, if you wanna see how to use this charger or what to look for when choosing the battery, please subscribe. I'll be making a bunch of videos on this charger and how to use it. And while you're there, there's a bunch of videos on FPV. I just did an unboxing on a new drone by Beta FPV and also one by Gep RC. So guys, take a look at the channel. There's a bunch of content on there. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.